Hi, my name is Nina Camplin and I'm the Arts Facilitator for the online workshops for the VC Gallery. I'm here this week at Rosemore Country Cottages and Nature Reserve and I'm going to just introduce you to Jackie who's one of the owners here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sorry. She's going to introduce the cat. <laughs> right. I am Jackie. This is Flekje, which is Dutch for Spotty. She passed away recently. She was born deaf, had the most startling blue eyes and was the most complicated cat we had. But I still like to hang on to her for a little longer. Excellent. Thank you. So this is my um, reference that I'm going to be using today. And uh, I'm going to be painting it on this wall here, which is... Um, it's a stone wall and it's been painted on a, with a base of grey masonry paint. So if you're going to um, be painting outside and you're going to be putting a mural onto an exterior wall, it's always best to give uh, a, a base coat of masonry paint just because it's got all the anti-fungicides and weather resistance and all that, this kind of stuff in them. So I'm going to start today by um, just telling you how I put this together. So they sent me the, the photograph of the cat and I've blown it up and I've um, had to print it out in two pieces to make it life size. And then what, I'm, what I've done is I've cut it out and then stuck it onto the wall around it so that I've got the cat shape there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to block in a base for the cat. I'm going to stick that there for reference. I'll take this off here and I've just used chalk to give myself a rough outline and as the cat is um, the whole base of it is white that's going to give me a nice strong base to start putting the detail on so I'm going to just block in a white base to start with What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the tail so that it hangs down around the wall. So it's going to come down. Like so. And um, before I carry on, I just want to say that these paints that I'm using, these are masonry paints. Um, they usually come in like five litre tins. So instead of me having to lug around a load of paints in the back of my car, I put them into these small cartons just so that I can have a big selection of colours and I've just got one box that I have to carry. Now we're outside here so hopefully this will dry quite quickly in the sun. It doesn't look like it's going to rain at the moment. So hopefully it will hold off while we're doing this. And I'm going to, while this is wet, I'm going to just start putting some of the shading on the cat so that we've got uh, the light coming in from this side. It's going to be a little bit darker on, on that side of the, uh, of the cat's body. Just using the lids of these cartons as a palette. I'm going to put my rag here to dry the brush. So I'm going to use the white. And I'm just going to add a little bit of blue. And a dip. just a touch of brown as well to, so it doesn't look too blue. And it'll go to more of a grey colour. And then I'm going to just bring it in on this side. And then we've got a, a kind of dark shadow in behind its chest there. Now you may notice that these paws are slightly on different levels. But I've brought them down to the level of the shelf that the cat's sitting on. So that it's going to look like it's actually sitting on this shelf. Because otherwise it's going to look like the paw is raised a little bit, which might look a bit odd. And I'm going to put in the really dark bit on that side of the the leg. So I'm using brown and blue. Now because these are masonry colours I can't really give you specific colours but a kind of brown and a blue. And now I'm going to get this dark marking in on the side of the cat using brown and blue again. Good thing about when you've run it out to the right size you can get reference easily by holding it in front and then seeing where that falls. We've got some dark on the face as well. A 
it'll also be quite dark underneath where the cat is actually sitting. Ideally, I need this paint to dry a bit, so I'll just try and get this down as much as I can. It's not as dry as it's, it's not drying as quickly as I thought it would because the sun's gone in now. I'm going to get this um, kind of ochre patch in. When you're doing animals, um, dogs or cats, uh, it's good to follow, when you've got a brush, follow the line of the hair. So I'm going down because the hair will kind of like, the fur will sweep back across its back like this. So I'm following the actual direction that the fur will lie. And you start to get a, an effect of hair happening as well. And then we've got some of this colour on the face. Okay, I'm just going to um, go back over with a white on the highlights just to give it a bit more of a three-dimensional feel so that it's going to be lighter on the top of it. Now when you're drawing um, or painting animals, the thing that really makes them come alive is when you get the eyes in. So the rest of the body, even the face, can be quite loose, but if you can get the eyes in quite good detail, it really brings the whole thing together. So this cat, um, Jackie said, had bright blue eyes, so I'm now going to block in the eyes. Okay, so that's in as a base. And then I'm going to start with the fine brush and just start putting some details in on these eyes. So when you when you have when you do the eyes they have a they are inverted into the face there's a socket so you always get shading kind of around the top part of it where the skin's folding over the top of the eye. So we'll do that first. We're just using a black for this. And you get the same happening underneath, but it's not normally quite as strong. And then on the actual eyeball, you'll get a bit of shading at the top. So the eyeball tends to be a bit darker underneath the, uh, the lid. So I'm just going to make that darker blue up there. You can see it's starting to look like the shape of an eye. And then the, the pupils in cat's eyes, they will tend to be um, more open when they're indoors, when they're in a dark area. This cat's outside in the sun, so I'm going to make the slits a bit more um, closed up. And then you can just see a bit of the tear duct coming in on this side. It shows it's darker than those. bit of the shape of the mouth around here as well. It's starting to look like a cat. So now I just need to, I really need to let this dry off a bit because the paint's just not drying properly because I need to start building this up. I'm going to just do a little bit of colouring on the inside of the ear because you can tend to get kind of a, a pinkish colour. Right, I'm going to let this dry, I think. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you again next week. Bye!